uh, I had a hobby too. Mine happened to be guns and ballistics. And I studied guns and ballistics as much as I could, and I wrote an article it was about high velocity. So out of all my years working at Weatherby, the last five have been some of the most exciting. Working with Adam, with him running the company. And to think that I get the opportunity of carrying on my grandfather's legacy 75 years later here in Sheridan, Wyoming, I mean, it really is a dream come true. On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. My true love gave to me a podcast from Weatherby. <laughs> <laughs> really well, welcome to the On Our Mark Weatherby Podcast. <laughs> that was Adam Weatherby singing a great rendition of A Christmas Carol. Merry Christmas. Pick his album up. We are, we are having a great time here as Christmas approaches. And we wanted to release another podcast. It has been a, a little bit of time before since we've done one, but yeah. that's mainly because we've been hunting. We've been hunting a lot. Quite a bit. Or walking in the woods. Or walking in the woods, depending on who you are. There's and been some uh, armed hiking going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a decent amount, as there should be. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what makes it fun. Yep. But yeah, um, thanks for listening in to the Weatherby Podcast. I'm Kevin Wilkerson. I'm Luke Torkelson. I'm Mike Glass. I'm Adam Weatherby. We're we're just blessed with Adam's presence here today. Yes, we are. Um, he's here every day. Thanks, Kevin. But it's shout always out. great to have him. We shout out our <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Adam Weatherby. Um, yeah, you know, today we kind of just wanted to get on the line and talk a little bit about our hunts. Um, talk about a little bit of the performance we've seen out of some of our uh, one, actually our new round, and then a little bit more about the custom shop, which hasn't officially launched yet, but kind of does today and kind of does tomorrow. So we're going to talk about it. That's right. Uh, Mike Glass here at the table actually um, does a lot with the custom shop, and we have a couple items on the table, which obviously uh, listeners can't listen to. But if you check us out on YouTube, you'll be able to see these models and then also check out weatherby.com slash custom to pretty much make any rifle you could imagine. Any Mark V you want. Any Mark V you want in cartridges, in colors, in fit and finishes. We've got it all. So let's talk a little bit about the custom shop. I mean, if you think about it, it's how we started, and we've always been kind of off and on and had different levels of it of what we could do, back to even some of the craftsmen that my dad or my grandpa had down in California of, you know, wood, wood carvers and embellishers and the guys who could mm-hmm. really, you know, it's a, it's a lost art, really. Yeah, to the kinda, true craftsmen that yeah. we don't have as much of anymore. Yeah. yeah. Really, in a lot of industries. In, in America. Unfortunately, yeah. it's not yeah. so much craftsman as much as it used to be, but yeah, you got to go overseas a lot of times or Europe or different yeah. places to kind of find that. So, yeah, but custom shops, I think, have taken a different form here, especially over the last decade. Um, and with you know, new materials, when you got, I mean, custom shop of the old is a little different than the new when you're talking. It used to be about you know, the wood carvings and the inlays and all those different things, and now you're talking, hey messing around with words like carbon fiber and titanium and Cerakote colors. And it's, it's a whole Dips. different deal. Yeah. yeah. Where you can really kind of custom build something that's unique for you. Yeah. One totally kind. different type of custom product, which is pretty interesting to think about. Right. Yeah. Right. What's the, Mike, what's the slogan? Something about us and them. And uh, no one builds a better rifle than both of us. So yeah, it's, it's kind of the slogan we use for it yeah. because essentially the, the, the person builds the rifle, they dream it up. Yeah. We, we put together a completely unique piece that is on a proven Weatherby rifle, and we uh, we sent it to you. So it's pretty cool. So, Mike, how's it work? How's so it work? It's pretty neat. You can go onto the website and check it out. You pick your base model, whether it's an Accumark, Backcountry, Weathermark, Camilla, Deluxe, whatever you'd like. And then based off of that, you just kind of a la carte pick and choose your little parts and pieces and colors and designs and dips and make it yours. It's it's uh. It'll show you a rendering exactly of what, what the rifle will look like when it's done. And, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah. It's, it's really simple, but at the same time, you can do there's sure. thousands of different options. Yeah, I mean, just to run together. through some options. We've got, obviously, you start out with your cartridge selection, mm-hmm. both well, standard. Actually, no, you start off with your shooter orientation because we're gonna. I know we got a lot of left-handed mm. shooters yep. out there. Mm. Shout sure. out to lefties. Shout out to lefties. Shout out. out to those lefties. 10% of that market. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But 90% of the posts. Yeah, 90% that are of the posts on <laughs> social media to us is from left handed. Mm-hmm. So, so we're shout offering, out to you guys. That's we're right. definitely offering that. Like deluxe models, they can get them left handed now. Um, these new, I think everything is going to left handed except for the standard action right now. Yeah. So any Magnum, any, any Magnum, Magnum cartridge comes in that nine lug left handed mm-hmm. action. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mark five. So then once you pick your shooter orientation, you pick your caliber on, you know, based on what you want to shoot, what's offered in that model. 
Um, you go from there and you build it up from your platform. So for the AccuMark, a really good example is you can choose whether you want that pro model, the elite model, or just, you know, the, the AccuMark classic model. Yeah. You can move your way up from there. Choose your stock dip. Go flute down colors. Flute colors. You can two-tone your flutes. You can you change can your brake, your change barrel. Change your brake, your bolt, change your bolt, change your, your bolt safety knob. lever. Yeah, bolt handle. You yeah. Can get you can get different options. colors. Different trigger options. Yeah. Two Flat different trigger, face. Two different trigger options. Um, probably see some other stuff coming up in the near future, mm -hmm. too, on there. Different we'll, options with we'll that. We'll just keep adding to it and adding to it as it yeah. grows. So, Yeah, pretty cool. This was a redesign really kind of from the ground up on this online configurator. Yeah, right? the way it, it works, no doubt. Um, mm -hmm. There's so many different options that, that originally could be selected that it took oh, 900 images for yeah. people to be able to go on there and select what they want. So there's 900 images on that database. And as you click through and choose base models, it really – depends on what you pick your base model on and or that, that gives you your ultimate. So just for instance, you can't get a, uh, a Weathermark LT that shoots a 3378. For us here, it, it makes sense. But because of the flutes and the number two, you can't get a, a 3378 or a 338, 378. But in a number three contour AccuMark, you could. So you could right. build up all these different models and cartridge configurations. So there's just a lot of options. And Mike had to go through... <laughs> And learn all those options, all those configurations, so that when somebody logs on and looks at them, they don't have to do that because uh, uh, you know yeah. otherwise you wouldn't get anywhere. So just click through and figure out what you want. Spent and a lot of time with the gunsmiths learning me up real good because I would build something. <laughs> they'd be like, "Hey, hey shout out to our gunsmith!" Yeah. yeah, shout out to gunsmiths. Shout out and the and the Cerakote yeah. guys. Yeah, shout yeah. out Cerakote guys. guys. Let's talk about some Cerakote well, stuff. Well, let's talk about the gunsmiths real quick. <laughs> you know what's cool about the gunsmiths is. That all those guys moved with us from California too, and only no, team, right? Yeah, the only team to have a hundred percent, you know, uh, of that department move with us, and I think that's kind of cool from the standpoint of the longevity that they've been here at mm -hmm. Weatherby and really know our products well. Mm -hmm. So, Mike, when yeah. you're talking about talking to them, these are guys that not only have the education experience elsewhere, but also at Weatherby, which is kind of cool. So yeah. these are guys that have been around a while. Yeah, they've definitely been paramount in building this configurator because without them, I would have been. Yeah. trying to search through spec sheets and it's just been a nightmare yeah. so yeah. sitting down with them and talking with them and mm -hmm. yeah and then another thing that we've talked about in previous podcasts but we'll bring it up again is that now with our new facility we have multiple Cerakote booths so let's talk about a little Cerakote stuff because we've got some jam up Cerakote guys right now we've got one in front of us that is a battle worn we call it we call it a field worn field worn field worn whichever yeah. way you want to look yeah. at it but it's inspired by battle worn mm -hmm. It's really cool looking. We did a we did a custom rifle one off mm -hmm, uh, did. that you had sold a, a few of back in I was October. like eighteen. I want to think, that was, I want to think that, that was eighteen yeah. of them. I think it was in July. I, th I put them up. It was right after the grand opening or right mm -hmm. around that month. With the with a detachable mag uh, mag box. It was. It was a detachable mag box, and it was burnt bronze. Burnt bronze field worn. It looked black really gun. Really, yeah, it was good. a sweet gun. They went pretty quick. They yeah, <laughs> it was, wasn't it? What cartridge was it? Six, Six five, five three hundred. Yeah, yeah, drop box magazine. Yeah, so this is very similar, in the in the field worn pattern. It's the it's a it's a very similar pattern. We're using uh, actually two um, Cerakote colors that the the Cerakote guys custom made. So that's uh, we're talking about making maybe making it whether it be gray and or whether it be gun smoke or something along those lines. Those guys they blended the colors together to kind of match the colors on the stock. And then, because the like several thousand Cerakote colors wasn't enough, so we had to exactly come up with so we needed our yeah. own. Yeah. Um, yeah to come up with but they matched it and they even did it on the bolt on the spiral bolt the bolt sleeve the handle it, there's almost like a tint of blue to it, it there is a little yeah. hint of it blue. actually looks completely pink to me <laughs> <laughs> side note kevin our marketing director is actually colorblind I, yeah <laughs> if we could talk about this for a half hour because it's fun but we yeah. won't <laughs> yeah that, that look that gun doesn't look that great to me but i trust all of you <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing. So I th what I think is really cool about the custom shop is if you see um, one of our new models, like the new Backcountry, and you're like, I just really wanted that in First Light Fusion. It is really easy. Select the Backcountry model, select your stock color, and you can do First Light Fusion. You could do Kuyu. You could do Cryptek. some different. Yeah, you could do Cryptek. You could Bad do lands. some different paint colors. Mm -hmm. um, but it just, it's just so easy to go in and just pick the one that you wanted, and you don't have to necessarily – settle if if you call it that but to settle for just the way it was so it's going to be real easy you can add it to your cart check out we'll contact you after the fact and uh get get with you where you want that gun shipped to get to the right ffl and it's a pretty easy process and right now we're looking at about a nine, 90 day 90 day 90 day lead time it, 
I mean, if there's a whole lot of orders like we have right now, we've been getting blown up right now. So, but we're trying to get them out in 90 days. And so that's generally what the average has been 90, 90 days. Some, sometimes they come out sooner than that, which yeah. is really surprising when you get one out in like 30 days and the customer's mm-hmm. like, I just got a custom rifle in 30 days. What? That's great. <laughs> which is happening. Yeah. And what's cool is <clears throat> if you're listening and you're ever thinking about going to a, a show, we'll be at a few different shows with some of these custom guns. We'll have this kind of touch screen you know, in the booth where you can kind of build it and really see some things up, up mm-hmm. close and personal. So we'll have that at, what, Wild Sheep Show? It'll be at Wild um, Sheep, Western Expo will have one, uh, Safari Club International will have one. And so there, we're actually building, we built specific custom rifles for each of these shows that we'll have there for like kind of a show special kind of thing where people can cool. buy them. That's cool. So there's like a Kuyu gun and Safari style gun. and a Yeah. yeah. Western it's style. also cool that not only the Cerakote with the metal work, but we've also really improved our options in custom paint jobs as well, um, which is kind of cool too that we got just more and more colors and the guys here are doing a great job on that. So there'll be more and more offerings, you know, on that too, which is yeah. fun. Yeah, for sure. Why do you have sunglasses on? Uh, <laughs> man, I was hoping you wouldn't ask that first. So... I was attacked by a mountain lion. Oh, yeah, uh, giant. The or people small? that are um, the people that are just listening only won't be able to see. But uh, I, after, Looks, we had our we had our company Christmas party there. last night. Yeah. Oh had, yeah, company Christmas we, party last night. We had our it company Christmas party that was last fun. night, and a mountain lion got me on the way to my car. Was it called ice? You slipped on the. No. Ice? What happened? <laughs> I was at home. Uh, went after the Christmas party and was playing with my kids and our dog. And I got him all fired up, you know, getting him riled up. And he's just a big, goofy lab, labradoodle. And he scratched me. He just it looks kinda, bad. It does. He kind of just grabbed his paw across my face. And it, it, I grabbed it, you know, like mm-hmm. that didn't really hurt. You grab yeah. it and you see your hand. There's blood all in your hand. And you're, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And it was pretty bad. So I uh, washed it out real good and did the try to. Uh, disinfect it with some rubbing alcohol and then hmm. super glued it back together. That, that was Jeez. a real fun experience. <laughs> yeah. The mountain lion was cooler though. Yeah. yeah. Mountain yeah. lion would have been better. Yeah. But your dog's almost the size of a mountain lion. Yeah. He's about a, almost 110 pounds. Yeah. Now, so. Size of a mountain lion. Yeah. <laughs> Juvenile. <laughs> Juvenile, no yeah. doubt. Not the but ones you and I shoot. Yeah. yeah. You guys yeah. shot some big cats. That's true. Yeah. I shot mine first one this year. Yeah. So did I. Mine was in February. Oh, yeah. That's oh, that true. Was crazy, yeah. right? Wow. It seems like it was true. last year. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But, yeah. Wow. Anyways. So, hey, speaking of Christmas and the holidays, yeah. we had you bring this card in. Yeah, because so it's like a Weatherby mail call. Yep. Oh, man, I wish I had a segment for the Weatherby mail car, but call, but I don't. It's okay. But, yeah, we, maybe we, we could make one. We might make one. Mail call. Yeah. So oh, that's it. Yeah. There it is. Perfect. <laughs> so Anyways. We need to read this Christmas. Adam, you need to read this Christmas What's cool card. is around the office, we've partnered with a lot of people for a lot of years. And so it is neat this time of year that some of our friends out there in the industry send things junk food i mean we got the yeah. parmesan cheese from the italians yeah. yesterday so that was kind of nice really got nice. some cherries and covered yeah. in chocolate the other yeah. Day. yeah bottle yeah. of wine from another supplier so you know you never know what's gonna be in there so today i opened this up and i got this really cool knife uh from my good friend butch who's the ceo co-founder of cryptic Shout outdoor out. group and butch sent me this cool knife where the sheath has kind of that cryptic pattern in red and it's a it's a pretty cool little handmade knife, super light. It's a sweet knife. And G10 grips, it's nice. Yeah, and then I got a card from him that said, uh, his knife is handmade S30V steel, G10 handle, honed by diamonds from a fallen star and inlaid with unicorn hair and gold from Solomon's mine. I hope it serves you well on your adventures. Merry Christmas, Butch Whiting. So. Yeah. What's amazing in that is the yeah, unicorn good. hairs. Very, so very it's, hard to it's find. It's basically a Harry Potter wand. It's yeah. a knife. Yeah. It's no. pretty cool. So unicorn it's right here. I got that today from a good friend. Tough to find. Butch. I, think, <laughs> I, I feel like we should go out on a limb here because of how great we found this card and invite somebody and other people to maybe send us some cards. That's a good that, idea. That have, and cool that, presents, too. Yeah. yeah. And, well, yeah, I'm not trying to solicit the presidents, but, but yeah, don't. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, but we could, we could read some awesome mail that we get. We could. Oh, yeah. If you want to send mail a piece call. of mail to us. Oh, man. Who just said mail call? That was me. That I was d- impressive. Thank that you. That was really good. It actually sounded like a sound bite. I thought it was Mike, because Mike has a, kind of an actually deep voice. What about, what about mine? <laughs> I'm a real boy. <laughs> Case in point. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want to send us mail, we'll read it. 
Uh, put it to uh, Weatherby Podcast, 1550 Yellowtail Drive, Sheridan, Wyoming, 82801. Mail yeah. call. Yeah. And Adam Weatherby will yeah. be on here and he'll say that. Maybe. And then we'll read your mail. Yeah. <laughs> but don't ask for a left handed Mark V yet. <laughs> Well, no, in a six-lug. In a six-lug. We in have a it six in the nine-lug. Yeah, that's what yes. I meant. Yeah, yes. sorry. Yes. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah. 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 Anyways, we all like that card. I think it's great. Yeah. It's nice of him to send that over. And, um, you know, we're talking about hunts. We're talking about mountain lions and things like that. And then mm-hmm. we kind of got into six-lug Mark Fives. But, you know, that all kind of makes me think about 6.5 Weatherby RPMs, which is the most recent round that we released on September 2nd. And uh, we've killed a lot of stuff with it this year. I should say harvested, but. Truth yep. is, we killed it. No. Yeah. Um, so It's tough to harvest them without killing them. Yeah. yeah. yeah so it's tough. Yes. Um, we've got a short list of the stuff that we've shot mm-hmm. thus far quickly in the last two months. First animal ever, Adam, you shot a bear? Yep, shot a bear, 420 yards, northwest Montana, back in May. First animal taken, was it? Yeah, that's so. pretty cool. And the second animal taken 140 was... 140 Here's the thing, by the way, about cartridges and bullets. The funniest thing is, we always joke around here, Everybody loves to hear what everybody else uses all the time. So, like, if we don't say exactly what people what are going to ask, true. Yeah, you yeah. got to say it. Everybody the wants to know. Yeah. 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 Yep. There's a 140 cool. Acubon. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next yep. day, shot another bear. Not you. Yeah. Joseph else. Von Benedict, a uh, good friend. Call out. Was. Shout out. Uh, was, yeah, shot a bear a couple days later. Actually, two days, maybe. Two or three days yeah. later mm-hmm. up there yeah. on that same hunt. Sure. Uh, he, was, he actually hand loaded the 143 ELDX in the in 6 5 RPM. 200 something yards, um, one shot. Yep. Great shot. Yep. And yep. the third animal is an antelope. Is that the one I shot? You your, shot your it. Yeah. Yep. With a Carbon Mark Elite. Carbon yep. Mark Elite, it was what, 250? Yeah, 250. Um, shot with that 140 Acubond again. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. One shot for sure on that antelope. Did you have the suppressor so on? I didn't. No. I didn't for that. But Carbon Mark Elite was kind of fun. Uh, it sounds a little weird, but first time I, I hunted with the one with that flat face trigger yeah um on that elite i just really like that trigger yeah. um from from the the feel mm-hmm. of it it was, it was kind of cool so yeah. um i mean i didn't have to hike heck a lot of far but it was fun with that, that mm-hmm. carbon barrel and all that stuff so mm-hmm. and then i don't know who got the fourth i don't know if you shot your mule deer first or you sh- oh you shot your mm-hmm. mule deer first because you shot yours on opening day i did yeah uh, and you shot day. yours on fourth fifth sixth maybe yeah, yeah. something like that mm-hmm. yeah i shot a mule deer Opening day with my son, public land, uh, 450 yards with the 140 Acubon. Yeah. Uh, and I did shoot with a suppressor, which was the first time shooting with a suppressor uh, at an animal. Mm. And that was that was, You're that sold. was a game changer. You're sold. Yeah, I really don't ever want to shoot without a suppressor again. Yep. It was yeah. wild. It's, yeah. I mostly did it for um, ear protection for my son. He doesn't like loud noises. Don't want him to get you know gun shy, recoil shy, whatever. Um, so makes it so easy. Don't have to worry about ear pro. There was four smaller bucks, much closer than the one that I shot. And they kind of just lifted their head up and looked around and then went back to eating grass. And it's like, they didn't even care that the shot went off. It was crazy. Mm. So yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Hmm. That's cool. And then you shot your mule deer in Southwestern Wyoming. Correct. Yep. With the meat eater crew. Yeah. So that was fun. That was uh, backcountry TI. It was on a, uh, shout out. Yep, to, to, to the meat eater crew. Meteor so crew. went up there with Steve and uh, Ranella and Giannis, and um, that was a, a backcountry horseback, which was kind of fun. So took the backcountry TI uh, in the six five RPM, and uh, that was that was a blast. So got to haul yeah. that around, put it in out of a scabbard all day, and kind of do the whole horseback deal with it, which was fun. Uh, was hoping after I ended up tagging my mule deer, um, it was one shot kill as well, uh, closer range shot. It was kind of a cool story, but he was. Uh, kind of stalked him in the brush, actually spooked him, ended up finding him, kind of shooting through the brush, only about 100-something yards, and it was fun. But ended up trying to hunt down a bear after that, uh, but never never got close enough. Mm. So, yeah. And then I think Raleigh Whalen, one of our sales managers, shot a mule deer with his next. Mm-hmm. Shot it with a backcountry steel action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, was that a 300 Weatherby? Yeah, was it was a th- that was a 300 Weatherby. Oh. It was. Yeah. yeah. He, shot, he shot his elk with the 300. Oh, the oh, my bad. Did I say mule deer? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, he shot his elk with – no, he shot his mule deer with it. He didn't Wait. shoot – he didn't shoot his elk – he shot his elk with a 300 weather beast. He shot his mule deer. i confirm this. I can't remember shot his mule deer one. with a 6.5 RPM. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, he yeah. shot his elk with a 300 right. weather beast. Yeah. Either way, both of them were both backcountry <laughs> steals. Yes, they were. But mm-hmm. – and then you shot an antelope doe. Yeah. When we – 
took a boat. We took a boat. We're going to give our spot away by saying what we did, but yeah. That's true. We, uh, we, <laughs> no, we didn't boat. take a boat. It no. was a helicopter. We took a helicopter, <laughs> uh, and we waited some time before we yep. hunted antelope. Public land. <laughs> public land. Antelope doe. We had a, uh, a doe and a buck tag, but there was a, oddly, there's a doe off all by herself. We just watched her right there on yeah. the... Yeah. We in a really weird spot. It was in a, She was in a weird spot. Uh, I had my whole family with me, all, I've got four kids, all six of us are out there and they're kind of just following me. I see this doe and I kind of, I had a hunch that if I let her see me and put pressure on her, she'd run around. And then I, I literally sprinted uh, a couple hundred yards and then she popped out on the other side of this draw mm. at right at 200 yards and just one shot, and then she dropped. And I want to, I want to go out and say that me and Kevin were actually on not far from you when you shot, and neither sure. of us heard it at with, all. We again, were, yeah, that's right. But you guys weren't hunting together. Yeah, we were. No, we were. Same, we same, all were. Same chunk of land. Yeah. There were literally yeah. nine people on this boat. <laughs> oh, all life vests. Helicopter. Yeah. All yes. had. Oh yeah, <laughs> helicopter. Yes. With that's life vests. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they made me. They made me. What I had to go to the front of the boat because the boat w- wouldn't. No, we shouldn't talk about this. <laughs> yeah, it was all safe. Everybody had life jacket, and we got across uh, the creek. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on from the antelope. Uh, I shot an antelope with a 6.5 RPM. You did? And yep. I didn't even have it on this list. I totally forgot. Mm. But that antelope I shot. You mm. shot that buck? I yeah. shot that buck with a mm-hmm. 6.5 yeah. RPM. Mm-hmm. And that was uh, it was 290 yards. Mm-hmm. And dropped it. It was 140 Acubon. It was great. I love the backcountry steel. It's my favorite gun we make. Whoa. It is. It's bold. Okay. I think bold. it's a okay. solid gun. It is solid. I know the titanium is awesome, but I love the backcountry steel. Yeah. Um, and then you shot two whitetails just last week. I did last week. I was um, grocery shopping. Um, got invited out on some private land here uh, close to our office and um, shot those with a Carbon Mark Pro with a 127 LRX and hmm. dropped them both again with the suppressor. Didn't even awesome. know you were there. Didn't know. Yeah. Cool. The two shots were probably seven seconds apart. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Crushed them. That's yeah. cool. Well, the, the RPMs really. Then I I shot a mountain lion with mine. You shot a mountain lion. Okay, I didn't line. I didn't make the list. Okay, yeah, I, it didn't I make the list. list. <laughs> that was before. Luke's. We're on eleven animals like first. Yeah, yeah. And we were and on a coyote. Coyote. We, sh- uh, we shot a coyote with shot a coyote uh, with Carbon it. Mark Pro with a mm-hmm. Pulsar Thermal at oh. night. It was pretty slick. That is cool. It was slick. So. Yeah, mountain lion. Oh, pulls Shout, Shout out. out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you shot your mountain lion as well. That was a cool hunt. That was super cool. Yeah, we got the dogs out and basically chased this mountain lion, like, straight up cliffs and hills forever. We got to the top, huffing and puffing a long time later. And then the cat jumped out of the tree and ran back down all the way. To 75 yards from the truck. <laughs> and then I shot the mountain lion down there. <laughs> up a tree. <laughs> yeah. He treated it. Tree. Yeah, like right next to the truck. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe 100 yards away or something. So, yeah, it was mm-hmm. pretty cool. So, that was my first mountain lion, actually. So That's cool. It was fun. Yeah. 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 Well, it was fun. Good deal. Yeah. Um, we've been doing a lot of hunting. I mean, even outside of the RPM stuff, we've, we've been hunting hard. Adam, you and Brenda hunted here in the Bighorns again. Yep. We both harvested... Uh, Bull elk Great uh, here mm-hmm. in Wyoming, yeah. which was fun. I actually took the 3378 AccuMark Pro, and so that was fun. Yeah. Um, so I uh, got a real nice six-point bull. Uh, Brenda got what was just her second elk, um, and uh, she used the Camilla on that. And, yeah, so that was fun. Six. And then 30 at 6, Camilla. Yeah, 30 at 6. Um, and then, uh, yeah, taking my kids out a bunch, took my son out. Uh, just public land, bull elk hunting, uh, two different weekends. He's playing high school football. It's his senior year, so it's hard to get out there. But, man, we – every time – every day we were out, we uh, we chased down some bulls and couldn't get out. We ended up – every time we were just spooking them in the trees and just kind of doing it all wrong. Like, he goes, Dad, I think when you hunt elk, like, we can just kind of go find them. They're out somewhere. We can kind of sneak up and then just get a good clean shot. All this rushing in the tree stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'm a pretty bad guy. <laughs> but that was fun. And then uh, – uh, Dana, my daughter, taking her out several times, cow elk hunting, and haven't been able to connect on that. But we we found some kind of herds down, you know, a little lower as or push lower here late season. So we got a late season, you know, cow elk hunt around here. So that's been kind of fun. Uh, but haven't connected there. So Brenda, But in all, you guys had... Brenda shot a mule deer uh, and antelope buck. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. and she shot an elk buck. So I think we have. You guys shot like Connor me. shot a doe. My son, we have. I think we're at ten. Ten animals in two weeks or something. Though. It was not. No, it no, was this very, very fast. Over, yeah. Let's just say the uh, I did a shout out Coolbot. I uh, did a Coolbot shout cooler. Out. Made it in my shop because I anticipated maybe a, a pretty rough fall. A harvest, so, a harvest season. Yeah, and so uh, there was a time where yeah, I had, I had two two bull elk and a deer and a half or two deer in there, which is beyond its and capacity. An <laughs> Well, I'm saying at any given time, I don't think there was an antelope in there at that moment. But it, we'd phase it out, and it'd hang, and like I just was like, I don't want to butcher another animal for a while. So uh, yeah, so we'll be having having lots of good barbecues and hangouts, yeah. different people and employees and stuff this next year. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Wyoming's been good to us. But no, there's a lot of people here. It's crowded. Uh, it's there's it's very cold. Yeah. There's and a lot of lakes. In- lakes are everywhere. We'd encourage. There's a lot you. of lakes. So you have to use Please. helicopters. So you have to use helicopters <laughs> to get no, across. No, yeah, we encourage you. I mean, it's it's a really bad place to live. So um, we suggest no one come here. No. Yeah, it's basically yeah. frozen. We can't get in or out for the next five months. Yep, yeah. we're stuck. So, yep, we're stuck here. As you can tell, yeah. we're hating it yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. for sure. Mike, you yeah. went cow hunt, elk hunting. I cow elk hunting. I've been elk hunting and cow elk hunting, but I haven't. Oh, you did both. Yeah. He's been arm hiking mainly. Yeah, you I've actually been. drew a pretty good tag for elk. I did. I drew a really good tag, and I went down into a canyon. It and snowed <laughs> hard on you that day. Snowed real hard on me. Um, the elk wouldn't come down from up high, so I went up for him. And uh, how'd that work out for you? I whiffed a shot. Uh, yeah, yeah, I whiffed one. I didn't get mm. steady, and I was real excited because that would have been my first. That's actually mm. been my first elk. And elk fever. Yeah, got the best of me. Mm. He's got a it. bad fever. Yeah. Mm. Bad so fever. now I've been uh, armed hiking for a cow elk late season. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> And that's been that's been fun. I put a lot of miles on though. And a shout out to uh, Crispy Boots. Shout out. Um, mm. They've been they've been put. You the like ringer. those crispies. I, man? I love them. Those crispy they're, boys. Yeah. They're my favorite. Those crispy boys. Those crispy boys. Yeah. Well, they are. Yeah, amazing. we was man. It's it was a cold fall. I was when I was hunting. Brenda and I were hunting for our bull elk. It was below zero in October. Mm-hmm. We were out there. Kevin, you might have been there. Honestly, it was the coldest hunt I've ever. It was like the most extended <laughs> cold hunt October. I've I've ever been in. It was actually pretty crazy. That was, week was crazy. It was sad. We, I, I, yeah, before I always thought toe warmers yeah, were for way. small children. <laughs> <laughs> and like halfway through that week, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm layering up different socks. I got insulated boots. But I mean, when you're, when you're below zero, and then I tried those toe warmers, and I'm kind of a fan now. Yeah, no, that was the week. Like, I feel the same way. I don't think small children use them, but I've yes. never been a fan of hand warmers or like even yeah. messing. I was like, oh, I'll tough through it. Yeah. That week. It was a mess. Yeah. I had hand warmers everywhere. Yeah. I mean, there was like a day that was like yeah. negative 12. So one day we came off the mountain and, uh, and then we're going to come back midday, come home because we, we live somewhat close to the mountain. And so we, we came home and I thought, oh, I'm going to go by the fire and I got two hours off and then we're going to go back up for who knows how long and go after elk. And so we came back and that's when there was a large mule deer buck on our property and it was season, nice four by four. So I came home to defrost my hands in front of the fire after hunting and Brenda goes I think that's my buck so I'm like all right well okay she went and got her 240 deluxe she just nice. she, yeah she's like her favorite gun but she didn't like to go take it up in the mountains yeah. it's nice and pretty she kind of snuck up on it and shot it and then cool bot went gu- gutted it <laughs> yeah skinned it and then threw it in the cool bot cooler and then went back hunting Went back yeah. out in the five below. Wow. <laughs> that was their break. That it, day. it was so cold that week. It was so stupid. It was freezing. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a weird, weird hunting season, actually. There, we got a lot of snow on October 15th. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. opening day. Seems like for the and last couple years we've dumped. been here, it snows every day on that day. Yeah. yeah. And but so in that area that I hunt, they it snows over that Hunt Mountain Road, and there's no getting there's no getting up there once you're, once you're snowed out mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Connor and I were in there. My son, one day, we were in there on that Yamaha Viking um, – Shout out. Vehicle, Shout out. Side by side. <laughs> and we were in there five miles and it snowed and I was hoping I could get out. It mobbed it though. It's, I think moving to Wyoming, like you just, ah, snow ah, and you're just scared. And it's yeah. like, dude, some of these vehicles around here can mob stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah. On your elk hunt, I saw, um, Steve Nelson. Yeah. Shout out Steve Nelson. Yeah. Shout out. I saw him do something in the snow with a full size truck that I've never seen a person do. That was <laughs> crazy. What happened? The snow. It was early on in the morning. A road, dark, dark, very dark. Two hours before daylight. Okay. And we were going up this road, and this road was just 
just straight up drifted snow. And we were in two trucks. You were in the truck, the truck with Steve. Mm-hmm. I was in our truck with our uh, controller, Seth Hiller. <laughs> and Not your everyday controller. No. Not your everyday controller. <laughs> yeah. uh, guides during the season. Mm-hmm. And the, the snow was at his hood level. Hood, hood level. Of the hood of the truck. Of a 350. It was an F-350. I don't know what it was. It's a big Huge truck. truck. Big, big truck. truck. And we all start slowing down. And it's like he just hit the gas. And I promise you, we were right behind that truck, and you couldn't even see the truck. It's just it was a like a snowplow. Yeah. What? And he had a big grill guard on the front, and snow was just going everywhere. But he didn't have a plow on the front. No, no. it was a, it was just a just truck. Steel grill guard. Yeah. I bet he went three miles. Oh, and Kevin. Up that road? <laughs> Two. Oh, okay. Sorry. My bad. My bad. <laughs> You're not talking 10 feet. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm talking we crazy. went some distance, and we passed cars that were stuck in that road, and Charts, their lights yeah. were how, on and blinking. How, and how, could, you, how could he yeah. even see? Was you, it? you actually couldn't. No, he's just cruising. You literally couldn't. Out, out of the side, there was a fence on the left. We were fenced on either a, a barbed, side. A barbed wire fence. And you like you could kind of just see out of the corner of your eye that, well, there's a fence. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. It was. I've never seen somebody go through snow like that. Yeah. Like without a plow or like yeah. an we ATV. We did some stuff, some side-by-sides that week in snow, too. That was, that was pretty tough. Yeah. Too, so... Wild ride up here in Wyoming. It is. It's but crazy. It, we now everybody throws their tracks on and their big old heated cabs yeah. and their side yeah. by sides. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 So now it's four days, five days till Christmas and 60 degrees outside. Yeah. It's, it's wild. Yeah. Warm. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be it's 50 wild. today, which is it was warm. pretty intense. But Jordan, Jordan, our product manager, and I went uh, at lunch. We went and walked a field just down the road for pheasants. We were not successful, but mm. like t shirt. It was awesome. Mm. Mm. Felt That's great. cool. I passed That's a big cool. section of BLM. I went and picked up. I killed a cow elk last Sunday uh, with a 300 Weatherby and 600 yard shot. Feel pretty good about it. But I high went and picked five. it up. <laughs> high five. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was wow. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Wait, wait. I want no, everybody to know. Shot. I that's want everybody shot. to know that that wow was just Adam <laughs> trying to me. make a noise. It's not me. <laughs> I think Adam now just wants people to think that he's the soundboard. He he does <laughs> a really good impression of Yoda, actually. Oh, hey, Jeez. speaking of Yoda. It's like Star Wars. Day. Speaking of Yoda, Star Wars comes out tomorrow. And I happen to have a picture <laughs> that I would like Adam to explain. <laughs> Me? Look at that. This is a poster that we have um, <laughs> that we've developed here. Adam, your family's big into Star Wars. <laughs> Right? So is your marketing department. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the true story. So is your it. marketing department. Yeah. So is the, the story is, hey, Star Wars is coming out, and can we get pric- pictures of you with a gun, Brenda with a gun, and Wrangler, our dog. Oh, Rang- look at Wrangler. Did you right see Wrangler? There. Wrangler's kind of yes, Yoda. And if sweet. you're not watching, moose. Uh, Christine yeah, and Mac, our graphic designer and content that creator, so took That's and awesome. made a Star Wars poster of... Me and Brenda and our dog, and yeah. it's pretty cool. It's pretty so cool. It's gonna. Uh, you guys yeah. posting that? What We're gonna post it tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Star okay. Wars Day. If okay. if you're just listening to the podcast, we, you need to to go social media. It's go gonna to be, it's gonna post media. tomorrow. Which by the well, time you hear tomorrow? this, it's already posted. Yeah, okay. check it out. And look at there's a there's like a, a Darth Vader, bighorn sheep. <laughs> it's a bighorn sheep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, That's amazing. It's a Sith, actually. <laughs> Okay. I, I <laughs> Actually, I joke around because I know nothing about Star Wars. So I don't even know what this means. But well, it's awesome. It's pretty cool. Yeah. We're pretty jazzed that you let us do it. So, yeah. Kevin was all tentative. Like, okay, the team's really excited. Like, we want to make sure, like, is this okay? I was like, that's awesome. And you know what? Uh, cool. By the time you check it out, it might be deleted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> People listen to the podcast. Yeah. We're going to talk about it on the podcast. Uh, yeah. And if they're like, all these people don't like it, we're just going to yeah. remove it. But yeah. it should be fine. Message us. We'll, we'll get it to you. It's a cartridge wars. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. But it's cute. Anyways, we've had, so far had a great season here at Weatherby. Um, obviously, we're here in Wyoming now. We love yeah. it. But we kind of, you know, not, we don't want anybody to know we love it. Luckily, this is an exclusive group of listeners on our podcast. But if you're looking for a Weatherby rifle and you want it to be exclusively, uniquely yours, check it out on weatherby.com slash custom. Absolutely. Because it is the place to put together whatever you can think of, you know, within reason. Yeah. But we're going to keep hunting. It's cool. When I when I think about this year and, you know, the last podcast of the year here and, and you know, putting it up and thinking about where we were at the beginning of the year as an organization and yeah. to think – 
here we are at the end of the year in our new building in Sheridan, Wyoming with our great team and, you know, had this Christmas party last night, which was a blast with the new team and new custom shop and new Mark 5s, uh, new cartridge this year. What's cool is, just to tease people, uh, we're not slowing down. 2020 is going to be a fun year, too. Mm-hmm. And, uh, in, in fact, we just had a new product meeting before this call and just going over the next couple of years. And so we got a lot of, a lot of fun new stuff in the future. So mm-hmm. um, looking forward to all you guys hanging with us for 2020 and beyond. Yeah, yeah be thanks good, for listening. So. Yeah. This is the uh, On Our Mark, the Weatherby podcast. Have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. From and everybody happy here. Happy New Year. Happy New right. Year, because we won't have a podcast between those two holidays. See you later. (laughs) Later.